Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's definitely worth it to come. Um, it's a very beautiful place. Thanks very much for organizing it here. Um, in fact, many people ask, uh, why do you crypto guys do conferences in Palma de Mallorca? And I just told them, because we can. Because it's a great place to do a conference, isn't it? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we are seeing in the market in crypto today, because my only industry expertise in travel is I'm a user of your products but I don't have a 20-year career in travel. I do have, however, about now 12 years career in crypto. Um, I'm one of the early investors. So I'll give you a little bit of a market overview, and I'll share you what I think is the crypto that AI will buy. Um, I work for BitMEX. We are one of the first exchanges that existed. Um, we do crypto only, so you cannot convert, say, any fiat currencies, euros, dollars, um, into crypto with us, but you can convert all kinds of cryptocurrencies with us. Um, we do a lot of derivatives. We've survived three what we call crypto vintas, so um, we're there since 2014. We have not done a rug pull like others um, that caused all these negative kind of uh, news in the last year particularly. Um, and I myself, I'm the CMO there, so my job is um, selling the cigarettes to the kids, and um, I do that rather <laughs> <laughs> I do that for a living. I used to be ex-KPMG, so I can speak to the CFOs. And I'm very proud to be a member of the Community Network um, Foundation Supervisory Board. With that, where are we today? Bull and beer. Certainly, uh, there was a big bull market in crypto in 2014. There was another one in 2017. Most of you probably missed those two. Sorry. Then there was the 2020 corona in first uh, bull market. Um, many of you probably did not miss that one because that was when crypto was in the FT and even in the local newspaper when my grandma asked me, is that what you do? Um, and I said proudly, yes. Um, she called me six months later and she actually said, is that still what you do? Because uh, certainly the market has changed a little bit, right? Um, we had a Bitcoin price of uh, three and a half thousand uh, during the Corona crash. And then it went up to 68,000. Um, that's a lot of money to be made. Um, now, remember, it's somebody's money that has gone for somebody's money that has been received, right? So it's, it's obviously an exchange. Um, and then now, since uh, the Fed's decision, we actually see that prices are kind of coming down a little bit. But price is only so relevant to, to look at a market and at an industry, right? The Bitcoin price is, is, is very popular in the media. Um, unfortunately, what is behind all the, the different cryptocurrencies and what drives valuation in projects is not so well reported. So we read about Apple's quarterly numbers every three months and then once a year with a bit more attention. Um, but we very rarely read about the hash rate of any blockchain, for example, or the adoption of any blockchain. And I think it's something that we'll see changing. Now, what do we see, though, is the number of crypto projects has gone up a lot. So there was about 3,000 active crypto token projects at the beginning of 2020. It spiked at about 10 active crypto pro 10K active crypto projects, and we are still seeing a very high rate, right? We still see many active projects. That's good news, because that means people have been able to collect money and are now still funding their projects, right? no matter where the price is. We see active projects. Um, when I say active projects, most of this is based on uh, data that we collect from GitHub, for example. So we see how active actually the project keeps being developed. Yeah. Um, now, looking at the market, we had a very speculative market during COVID times. right? Bitcoin was the new digital gold. ETH was the supercomputer. And all the other projects were like, well, we're something like this, but we're a bit better, etc. It fueled a lot of speculation. Many of those projects uh, were very quick and very on time, very strong in their marketing. And you can see it because when you look at the volume data, the 24-hour volumes, you see a lot of these spikes. So we as an exchange, we look at this a lot, and we see there's a lot of trading activity. Does not mean there's any building activity. Does not mean there's any utility in this, right? It's purely speculative. What we see now is what we call the biddle market, so the built and hodl market. Yeah? You can see that come May 2020, volumes go generally down. There's a few peaks. Guess when FTX went bust? Guess when um, Three Arrows went bust? Sorry, when FTX went bust. So you can see some peaks when there's a lot of activity. But generally, it's a much quieter market. People get time to build, which is important. right? We're no longer so distracted by prices. We're now 
focus on building use cases. So the Biddle market is probably the much healthier market than what we've seen in the 2020 COVID aftermath. Adoption. I think it was Michael who had the, the other chart that I was thinking about to put up, um, which is the adoption compared to the internet. I think that's a very good example. Google, uh, what was the most used phone in 1998? And you'll see the Nokia 5100, uh, 5110, sorry. Um, none of you has that phone today. 10 years later, everybody of you had the iPhone. The iPhone was only useful because we merged mobile technology and internet technology. And suddenly, a smartphone comes around, which is a massive difference in terms of usability and really showed why the WAP services of the early phones were still worth investing. Because only because of these WAP services in the early phones, we were able to do smartphones. All these countries that you see here, and I mean, look at where the developer nations are, right? India, largest developer pool in the world. US, one of the largest developer pools in the world. China, huge developer pool in the world. China is on the number 11 of global crypto adoption. And everybody talks about crypto being prohibited in China. No, it isn't. Um, so you can really see the biggest countries, the biggest nations, the most populated nations are very high on crypto adoption rankings, on centralized and on DeFi, which is great news because it means more people are building, more people are using, more people will have wallets. And if you want to have users from any of those countries, then you'll probably have to service them. Right? WeChat is already here on Mallorca. I've seen it. It will not be a long question until WeChat will also use its own crypto network. So 2020 to, to, to 2024, we're in the Biddle market. I think the reason I put 2024 there is there will be a price market coming again. This time, it will basically fuel all the projects that build something useful and have great use cases in the Biddle market. Um, and they will be able to collect VC money and collect user adoption in the next market. Why is that? Because there's better use cases now. We're away from purely financial use cases. We now see loyalty. We see identity. I mean, WorldCoin, maybe some of you have seen. It's a very relevant use case. Um, we see advanced technologies, right? The networks have become faster. Ethereum has done a major upgrade in staking. Avalanche, the chain that is sort of the underlying uh, for, for Camino, is a very high performing chain. So there's better technologies available compared to, say, pre-2020 times. And then we've seen a massive upskilling in developers. Hackathons happening with developers who have a lot of experience. China, India, US, all over the place, university courses about how to build stuff on blockchain, etc. So I think all these show it's not a dead industry. Um, whatever happened to the prices has had no impact on the adoption of the technology and on the, say, usefulness of crypto in the next coming years. Now, I use crypto, and that is a big difference to blockchain for me, because blockchain is a decentralized net, uh, it's a distributed ledger technology, very useful, but I think all too often seen as something in a cage. Uh, I and my 15 friends will have a decentral, uh, distributed ledger, and we used to play Counter-Strike in the past. Right? It's a little bit that. I think there's more when we start thinking of it as crypto and understand what the token economy is, because there is great value of token that is only fueled once you hold cryptocurrencies just like CAM tokens. Why is that? As humans, we want trust. And that's why we think these DLTs are great. Oh, they help us to improve trust. They're so reliable. I can verify my transactions. I, I can earn and I can burn stuff, right? And it's very subjective to be trusted. So if I'm trusted, if I'm a big player in the industry, well, that's good for me. If I'm a small player in the industry, I have to earn that trust, and it takes a lot of time. But trust is one of the major selling arguments for building blockchains, right? It helps us to be more trusted. Humans won't be the actors, though, in the future. AIs will end up acting much more for us, not only guided by us. And AIs don't want trust. They want certainty. They don't care if you are earned or burnt if you're a big player or a small player. They'll look at your historic performance, and they'll evaluate that much quicker than any human would do, and they want certainty, which means they have a need for calculable information. They also want verifying stuff, especially when you think of identities and stuff, but it needs to be indefinitely repeatable. That's very different. Human trust 
is almost always ending. Certainty is always repeatable. They want it independent. I don't want any state actor to turn off my machines. I don't want Google to say, sorry, we offboard you and have an issue with my data center, right? Because my owner is a Russian national or whatever. Yeah? Um, and of course, I don't want irreversible data. I want <coughs> updatable data, but I don't want it to be irreversible. And so that's why tokens are probably the dominant way for an AI to indicate decisions. So tokens being digital, they can be a fund, an asset, right? Be it a utility, be it a security, that is up to humans to decide. But an AI will look at it and say, okay, that's fund, I can get money there. It's access and authentication, right? I can, with my wallet, access services, as we've seen already. Um, I can authenticate myself. I can prove that it's me and not somebody else. It's a very important feature. I mean, anybody that has played a little bit with AI picture generation will see how quick it is to make a picture of yourself being good or bad, and fake and falsify information. There's a trace, there's always a trace on a properly, in, um, on a proper blockchain, being an Ethereum system, CAM system, a non-DLT small lecture system. And then obviously, hey, tokens are rights and licenses, right? If I own a certain amount of tokens, be it, for example, Ethereum or CAM, I can use the chain. I'm using it for distributed computing in this case. I'm using it to store my information. So I have the right and I have a license with this. So altogether, I think tokens, and that being crypto tokens, are really what the AI will look for when they say, hey, I want calculable, verifiable, repeatable, independent, and irreversible funds, access, trace, and rights. They will not trust a human system. They will trust a DLT system, which is human-built, but then distributed amongst a large network. So when Tommy said, this is your network, it is really your network. As long as anyone in this room runs one Camino node, the entire network will work. And of course, if we get a couple of thousands, then it's very hard to get everybody shut off. Right? Until today, I don't think it's anywhere possible to turn off the Bitcoin or Ethereum network anymore. My little Mac mini in Hong Kong is going to run it, even for everybody of us if it needs to. Right? Um, no matter what Google, Amazon, or whoever decides to do with it. Very different to a banking server, very different to the Swift network, for example, as, uh, as many Russians have recently had to feel. So here it is. AI will choose tokens. AI will choose to pay in crypto. There's no doubt. It might be stable coins. It might be proper crypto tokens. It might be Bitcoin. Um, but there's no doubt that an AI system would prefer a token-based system for its reliability and its constant access. AI will also calculate on decentralized networks. And AI will not stay in the cage of an AWS system. They will say, hey, if I have the opportunity to move it out and go into a decentralized space, then I will prefer this. It's more reliable. I have less issues. I have no subjective actors stopping me. And I very likely may have even better performance in the future, right? AI will store data on a decentralized network. There's already projects like Filecoin out there, which is essentially a data storage. Cam lets you store data too. And that data is immediately distributed, not just across the two or three data centers that you pick on your Microsoft Azure or AWS, but across anybody that runs this network. So there's a super high reliability of this data. And AI will govern in crypto. DAOs will be the governance of software in the future. Right? We have essentially the option, as a token holder, to vote what we think is the best for the network. And it works. We see it happening. It works in Ethereum. It works in Bitcoin. There is many projects showing that when the majority of the users come together, we'll get a better system. Again, the AI will prefer such a system over a centralized system because it can calculate and influence it better. And last but not least, I truly think crypto tokens are the AI infrastructure. So we need to think in the token economy. We cannot just say, oh, it's DLT. It has to be the token economy because of all these things, because we store data there, because we make decisions there, because we pay with it. And with that, and being a member of the Camino Foundation, obviously, Camino is AI infrastructure because Camino is a distributed network. It doesn't run because of a single actor. It runs because of all the actors existing and all the actors running it. And I think that is what we want today 
in some parts of the economy and what we will want in the future in all parts of the economy. With that, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed it.